Welcome to the YouTube channel for Bible Biker Church in Rockwood, Tennessee. I am Fred Marshall, Elder and Associate Pastor. We pray that what you're about to see is inspiring to you as it is the truth in the Word of God as it is written. We pray that it blesses you and anyone that you share it with. If you like what you see, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also know that you can find us on Facebook under the page name Bible Biker Church. Thanks and have a blessed day. All right, well, welcome back to Throttle Up Biker Bible Study. How are you guys doing tonight? Awesome. Good. Awesome. I have a great voice for now. Let's see how long that lasts. It's uh, this, the, these um, allergies and the cold that I had and everything is just wearing on me. But uh, it's all right. We're getting through it. We're getting through it. Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some announcements. Uh, you'll start seeing some things change in here a little bit over the next few weeks. Again, we're trying to get ready for Open House, which is Saturday, June 1st. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and then uh, Sunday, June is her birthday, is uh, when Teen Challenge will be here. So we're trying to get ready for that. But just, I just also want to remind you guys, if you guys want to come Sunday morning for um, Sunday school, try to get here by 9.30 so we can actually start at 10 so we can get out on time so we can have church at 11. <laughs> Just one of those things we've got to try to remind people to do that. Uh, some work days are coming. If, for those of you that weren't here last year, this Sunday I'll start playing videos to show you what we went through last year. and It was, it was an amazing transformation, wasn't it, Gene? Yeah, big time. And, uh, you guys have to understand there used to be a wall here and there used to not be a wall there. So picking that wall up and putting it over there not what we did, but it was a, it was a transformation. I tell you, uh, we were all crammed in that little one little room just around the table for two years in the Bible study. And now we got this you know nice room for the chapel. So, but more things are coming because God keeps telling us there's more people coming and there's more people coming, and you can see it as you start watching how many people are here every week. You know, 30 this past week, 18 the week before because of all the bad weather, but. 40 a few weeks ago, 35, you know, and, and that's that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. We still don't really advertise. People, people tell each other, they're fine, they're fine. Tell their friends to come and things like that. I do have, I did have a, a Google ad up for a while, but the sign's not even up on Gateway anymore. I'll be taking it back down there. I gotta go talk to Johnny at the liquor store to make sure I can put it back in his parking lot. I love his reaction to that. Uh, a church wants to put a sign in my parking lot? <laughs> uh, yeah, because you have so many people stopping here. Yeah. You know, but it's just a, it's it's the ideal place for that sign. Absolutely. And he was like, put it up and leave it as long as you want. <laughs> and the city won't let me leave it for more than a couple of weeks at a time. But you know, we'll we'll work through that. <laughs> anyway, so you'll be seeing that coming up pretty soon as well. Um, want to ask you to please silence your phones during service because it gets very distracting especially if you're watching over the internet um, I really appreciate all the volunteers and all the ones that have tried to come in and do things and when we do this work coming up if you can't help that's fine but please pray for us and if you have the opportunity to come and eat with us because we'll eat every afternoon here we go again, Mom. Eating every afternoon, two o'clock. You know, it's just one of those things. Uh, remind you guys, there is a ride Saturday. I know. I'm sorry, to talk. but that won't be the only one. But we're going out to Maryville to Smoky Mountain Harley Davidson. Just a you know, this nice, easy ride out there and back. Probably stop to eat somewhere. You know, just one of those things. Pick one up while you're out there. Pick you one, a what, a t-shirt, a pair of socks, a mocha truck. Three of them. I don't care, I'll take an old supply. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I actually been to Smoky Mountains before. Yes. It's very nice. It is very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, John's. No. I was going to say something else about, about something on the announcements. You'll start seeing the announcements up here. That's weird. <laughs> um, you'll start seeing the announcements up here this coming week, too. That's going to be kind of cool. I've been working and getting things working and make it easier for Tim to do his job back there. Now, so. <laughs> anyway, 
Last few weeks uh, we've been in the book of John, and last week we specifically started in uh, chapter 6. Everybody remember that? Yeah. Yes. yeah. You know why you remember it? Because what were they doing? Eating. They have eaten, that's right. There's a bunny rabbit right there in the... See him in the yard? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh! Pretty cute. Oh, he's cute. I don't watch him for too long because the cat may be out. You know, they oh, taste no. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they taste good. I have that. Uh, one of the th one of the things about my dad and I, yeah, uh, growing up, he had a huge garden here, but we would go fishing all the time and we'd go hunting all the time, not necessarily for ourselves, but to feed the community. We fed all kinds of people: squirrel, rabbit, fish. There was a man down the road here that loved for us to bring him carp. Most people would not eat carp, but he would make fish sticks out of them and loved them. So, anyway, so. Back in John 6, now that we're talking about eating again, uh, uh, we talked about, you know, Jesus set up on the side of the mountain and he saw all these people coming and he, he said to his disciple, where are we going to get food for all these people? Not that he didn't know already, but he was kind of testing, what are we going to do? And, and, the, the, uh, and Philip said that, he said, I, a denarii wouldn't even buy enough bread for some of these people, because how many people were there? 5,000. 5,000 men. Men, plus women, children, whatever, right? So, Philip comes back and says, well, there, there's a little boy here who's got five barley loaves and two little fishes, right? So I made that comment, you know, rinse and sardines for everybody, right? And, and Jesus distributed the food. Now, 5,000 men plus women plus children, right? So he's, he's tearing off little pieces. No, he's giving each one of them a meal. Because they ate their fill. And then he told the disciples, now go back and uh, pick up what's left. And what was left? Twelve baskets. Isn't it funny that it's twelve baskets full left? One for each disciple. Could be. Could be. I hadn't thought about that. We haven't seen twelve disciples yet, but... Could be. Now remember, we only have four. Now, a couple of John's disciples has come. John the Baptist has come over to Jesus' camp, but he hasn't officially invited them yet. So we still only have Philip, Andrew, um, John, and no, we don't have John yet. John's not even in the story yet. It's Philip and Andrew. That's the two brothers, and then they had. Uh, well, I can't think. It doesn't matter. Anyway, but we haven't even met John yet. So, so anyway, so we've got we've, we've got this story where now they've gathered up these 12 baskets of, of food to be put away for later, right? And then we, we talked about what happens next, right? So all, all of the disciples get in the boat and go headed back to the other side of the, of the, of the lake, right? Now, Lake Galilee and Lake Tiberias. So they're headed across Tiberias back into Galilee. Okay? And a big storm comes, and the wind blows, and the waves crash. And they're scared to death. I wouldn't be. <laughs> and then they look out, and they see this dude walking on the water. And instead of saying, it's our Savior, they go, who is that? Who are you? Who are you? Right? Ghost. It's kind of like a... Uh, um, Come on, what's the name of the band? Come on, come on, who are you? Uh, who? That's what I'm trying to find out. Who, 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 who are you? <laughs> see, I, fishers of men, see? <laughs> got one. So anyway, so we've got, uh, we've got Jesus now walking on the water, and he walks right up to the boat, and the men are all scared, and he goes, <clears throat> the seas are calm, and they're on the beach. That fast. Right? Everybody okay with me so far? Yeah. Remember, immerse yourself in the story. Feel the ocean waves. Feel the lightning and the thunder. Yes, sir? Is that when Peter went walking out on the water? No, we ain't got that yet. Oh, That's much later. This is a different time. Yep. So Jesus walked on the water twice. The answer's going to be yes. I hadn't thought of it that way. Or is it the same story told from two different perspectives? I don't know. I'll have to think about that for a minute. But Peter does not get out of the boat in the book of John. 
They may throw him out of the boat, but that's a different story. Well, I think they were fishing, though, that time, and there was more than just four of them in the boat. Correct. That's why I don't think it's happened yet. No. Yes, ma'am. I, I remember that there was a guy that was, he was told to go to Nazareth, or at least I think that was the name of town, was it? Was it? Nazareth is where Jesus is from. Yeah, and I think Jesus sent, sent a man there to go uh, tell the people of Nazareth to stop being bad. So, but he disobeyed him, and so uh, God, Jesus got really angry and decided to make a big storm. And when he did, um, he uh, that's Jonah, by the way. Um, yeah, Jonah, but Jonah decided to get on the boat, and when, they, when those people on the boat found out who was causing it, they threw him off, and he got swallowed by a big fish. Correct. That is the story of Jonah. Good job. Good job. Well, I'm, so, I'm glad I remember it. You're doing good. You're doing good, though. I like it. I like it. All right. So everybody's with me? Yeah. Everybody's ready to get into the next section? Now, tonight's section may be long. We'll try to get through it, but we're going to talk about the next day. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the, the TV series 24. Did anybody watch that? Yeah. I, I didn't, Continue. but I get the idea that every week was one day. One day, right? So that's kind of what I do when I'm in the Bible. Oh, and that next day. Oh, oh and, and on the next day. And on that very day. Oh, well, okay. So now it's, it's all piecing together. For those of you that were here Sunday, you saw this. If you weren't here, you get a chance to watch it on the internet. Um, Sunday's Easter service was about that. I went through all the Gospels and picked out uh, how it went chronologically so that you could see how it all went together. So it's kind of cool, I thought. That's just me, though. Yeah. All right, let me open us up in a word of prayer, and we'll get into tonight's message, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you for this place that you've given us. Father, we just appreciate everything that, that you have done for us, Father God, we love you, and we can't wait to hear more about the story of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Father, be with us tonight. Lord, send your Spirit to open our hearts, open our minds. Lord, and open our ears to the truth and the Word that you have given us. Father, we thank you for John and his words that you gave him. Father, but moreover, we thank you for your Son, Jesus. And we just thank you for everything you're doing to us, through us, and for us in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. And it was so amen. sticky. It was sticking to everything up here. All right, so we're, tonight we're going to start in John 6 and... Verse 22. Now, as I read through this, some of the some of these verses are too big to fit on one screen, so if, I'm, if I need to go forward, just let me know. All right? But uh, it says, on the next day... The, oh, I'm going to read it, so let, never mind. Scratch that last one. <laughs> on the next day, the crowd then remained on the other side of the sea, saw that there had been only one boat there. You know how many times I had to read that this week? Because I want to know where the seesaw came from. <laughs> On the other side of the seesaw, that there had been only one boat there. And that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. <coughs> okay. Did you catch that? These are the people that are left on the shore on the other side. The Where G that's right, on the seashore. Now I wonder if she was selling seashells on the seashore. So, on the next day, the crowd that remained there on that side of the sea had seen that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat. Then where is Jesus? It says that they saw that the disciples took the boat. Well, then who took Jesus? Doesn't say, does it? No. Uh, the again, why would he need transportation? I mean, he only walks just to, I guess, what? Uh, well, he took he, a boat to get he there. He could do anything, couldn't he? I mean, he could. He could. But he took a boat to get to that side. Don't give away spoilers. So in 23 it says, other boats from Tiberias came. Now, I found out something very interesting today, that Tiberias was named for the friend of the emperor at the time. Okay? So it has nothing to do with James Kirk. So Tiberius came near the place where they had eaten the bread, where they'd been eaten, huh? right? And after the Lord had given thanks. So these other boats that had been out in the 
Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee um, at the far end came near that place where they had been. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. Who told them they went, they went to Capernaum? Well, if you look at the geographical area, and once again I forget maps, but from the Sea of Tiberias back to the Sea of Galilee, you're going to go right to the port of Capernaum. Okay? And they think, that, that's got to be where he's gone. Yeah, it seems to me, though, I mean, if it doesn't say Jesus took a boat, but yet he was able to appear to the people in the boat, and then they're on shore all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Seems to me like he could go from shore to shore like that. Well, he can. He can. But these people that we're talking about now didn't see that. Right. Only the disciples that were in the boat saw that. So but now they're saying he should be in Capernaum. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? See, they didn't see him leave. They didn't see him get in the boat. They saw that the disciples took the boat, but then he wasn't with them. So they knew to ask certain questions. That's a long walk around the Sea of Tiberias. Okay? Yes, ma'am. But if, if Jesus could walk on water, he wouldn't need a boat. He could just go from shore to shore like that. Correct. Just like your dad said. That's, that's absolutely right. But listen, these people don't know that yet. We know it because we have the whole book. They're living the story right now. The book's not been written yet. So they're having to understand how physically it could happen. They don't get it. Okay? So when did you come here? Now, Fred, I, I got a question. I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, rabbi means teacher in Jewish, right? Yeah, and uh, that would be, yes, in, in Jewish. Rabbi is Jewish and ribioni in Greek. Okay, and then, so they're actually just calling him teacher. Right. When did you come here? I see. Yep. All right, I just wanted to... Yo, teach. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Jesus answered them, what I tell you about these words here? Pay attention. Pay attention when he says this, because he's, he's putting, this is my word, and as it, it is beyond contestation. Right? So, truly, truly, or King James would say, verily, verily, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. They didn't see the miracle of him feeding them with the fish and the loaves, only the fact that they got to eat. Bunch of bikers. I swear. Not, they, they didn't care that it was a miracle. They were just happy they got the bellies full. You know, earlier when Jesus was walking on the water, they had been with him for a short period of time, but they watched him performing signs and wonders. Who over did? And over again, before they were on the road. The disciples. And they still couldn't accept it. Right? They could, still couldn't accept it. That's right. That's, that's right. Us. That, that's that's hard -headed. That is exactly us. That's, Sir? That's hard-headed. That's what that is. That's yes, I am. What's it to you? <laughs> oh, you're talking about them. Right. Yeah. Right. So... Don't laugh, it just encourages me. Yeah. So here we go. Do not labor for the food that perishes. Uh-oh. Here comes one of them stories again. He's talking about food that rots. There ain't going to be no food that rots around us bikers, right? So for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. There ain't a hamburger that I've ever seen that'll last that long. You know them hot dogs? I'm not sure about But. <laughs> they wouldn't have eaten. They wouldn't have eaten hot dogs. Why? McDonald's cheeseburgers are last year. Pork. Pork. Right. Pork. Because they're Jewish. Endure. Thank God. <laughs> he took that away. Oh, by the way, I missed Bacon Fest two weeks ago. So oh, we forgot all about it. Oh man. Aww. Yeah. So here we go. So endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man. Whenever he says that, he's talking about while he's physically on earth. Mm -hmm. Right. He's talking about himself. The Son of Man will give to you, for on him God the Father has set his seal. No, not that kind of seal. He set his approval. This is my Son of whom I am proud. 
So he's like, don't look for the food that will perish, but look for the food that God the Father will, has sent you through me. So in other words, he's saying, don't seek me, seek the Father. Is basically what is around and I, I can agree with that, with that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Now, then they say, I love putting words in there, okay? So I, so, but, 28 says, then they said to him, what must we do to be the works of God? Think about that for a minute. If, if Jesus says that we need to, to, concentrate more on what God the Father is going to give, then they respond with what do we have to do to do that? What, what, is, what is the responsibility that we have to be able to become what you're talking about? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in Him whom He has sent. Any English majors in here that can tell me is that grammatically correct? Because that word bugs me so bad. What he's doing, though, is he's talking in the, the third-person narrative about himself. That is correct. That is exactly what he's doing. Get, being that God has given me all the authority, I tell you that him who he has sent can tell you that this is what has to be done. What? Yeah. <laughs> Believe in him whom he has sent. I know it's grammatically correct, but it just bugs me for some reason that M is there. I, I don't know why. You know, I guess it's I guess it's just that Tennessee boy in me. I just don't ever understand that word. Who? Well, you won't find y'all in the Bible either. I don't think. You haven't read mine. <laughs> <laughs> y'all must be crazy. Is how it starts, right? <laughs> Thirty says this. Then so they, these again are the people, not the disciples, said to him, Jesus. Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? And what work do you perform? Okay. They don't get it still. Look, their whole lives they've been taught. This is what Jesus will be. He will be the Son of God. He will be the one to free us. He will be this and He will be that. Now he's here, and he's doing the things that they've learned all their lives that would happen, and yet they still don't get it. Well then, how are you going to prove to me that you are who you say you are? Excuse me. Well, they didn't see him produce the loaves and the fish. They didn't know how many he started with, did they? Yes. They did? Yes. They knew. Uh, these are the people that came over across the sea. And sat down in the sea. grass. By that guy. Okay. These are the ones that sat down in the grass and got the food. And got the food. As Jesus peeled it out. But they knew he only started with five loaves and they were they were sitting right there when, when uh, Philip said it. So but they, they still want more. What are you gonna do to prove that you are who you say you are? Thirty one says, Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. Okay, what is the manna? Bread. Yes? Bread. Oh, bread. I thought you said Fred. So, yeah, it's it's the food, the manna. Every morning, God would, would send down the manna and the dove with very specific instructions. You remember what those instructions were? Only, what you need. Only gather what you can eat in the one day. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. That's the manna, duh. Jesus then said to them, there's those words again, barely, barely, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father, emphasis on the my, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. We're not talking monopoly money here, we're talking true bread. Okay? This is what it means. I have things to offer you that you can't get at the Piggly Wiggly. Right? 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 He says, it wasn't Moses that gave you the bread to begin with. You know, he didn't have a flour mill and, you know, stuff like that. It was God the Father that did that. And now, he's going to give you a new kind of bread. 
You know, man, I got kind of old after a while, I guess, right? So, they're, yes, sir. They're still living under the laws of Moses at this time. They are. And so they are worshiping Moses, I guess, in a way. Worshiping the God of Moses. Yeah, but they, they say, they think it was Moses that gave them the bread. Right. So they're thinking that Moses is in heaven handing the bread down to them. Apparently so. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's because they're still living under the law of Moses, right? Right. They are still under the law. <coughs> 33 then says this, For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Who is this He? It's God. The bread of God is He. It's Jesus. Jesus. Right. So, God the Son. You're not wrong. It's just, it's from a different perspective. Yeah. The bread of God is Jesus who comes down from heaven and gives life to the select few. No. To the righteous only. The to the world. perfect Jewish. Uh -uh. No. The to the world. world. To the world. They said to Him, uh, excuse me? Sir, give us this bread always. Think about that for a second. Now again, fast forward 2,000 years, here we are today, and we're still talking about this, and there's people that still don't get it, but yet don't we keep saying, give us, give us, give us? As a matter of fact, one of the prayers that we pray is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, give us this bread always. Now, he's got to tell them, they, they don't get it yet. They still don't understand what this bread is. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now, we've heard that part before. Where did Jesus say this before? Jacob's well. At Jacob's well to the woman, yeah. to the prostitute. Yeah. We were Good. guessing. Good. Who had who was living with the man that was not her husband, nor was it one of the five she already had. Yeah. Does that mean she had five at once? Doesn't say. But you get the idea. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Whoever believes in he whom the Father has sent shall never thirst. Hungry. But Simon, I think Simon was the one who helped Jesus carry the cross. We haven't got there yet. No, we're not there yet. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is Jesus speaking again. These, these should be read. I didn't get that done this week. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. I'm the one that the Father has sent that you've learned about for your entire lives. I'm here to save you. And you would rather think about the food that you just ate. <coughs> Not that I have done what He has said I should do. So He's saying, don't seek your next meal. Seek the Father and you'll never need another meal. Got it. <clears throat> See, it's easier to teach someone who hasn't learned the law than to unteach those that have learned the law which is where he's at right now. All that the Father gives me will come to me. So when Dad says I can have it, my inheritance, I get it. All of it. What is his inheritance? It's in the book of Hebrews, by the way. It's everything. The universe is his. <laughs> and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. He a place to live with me for eternity. Right? Elsewhere in the Bible it says that he's going to make mansions, make rooms, whatever, 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 right? So he's, he's like, i got a place for you. Yeah. You know, everything is mine. You're going to have a place. As long as you want to be with me. <coughs> for I, Jesus, have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Remember when he was talking to the disciples when they came to, to the well, to Jacob's well in, in, in the town in Samaria, they said, uh, Rabbi, eat. And he's like, I have food that you don't know about. And it wasn't Slim Jim's in his pocket. It was the fact that he was doing his father's will. That was his food. That's what he's saying again. 
uh, not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. He's the one that feeds me because I do His will. And He, and he will feed you as well. He will feed you as well. That was my next words. Thank you. And this is the will of Him who sent me. Nope, it doesn't say whom, does it? See, that's why it gets me every time I do this. And this is the will of Him who sent me. Why does it not say whom? Why does it just say, I just don't get those two words, right? Mmm. So I'm just going to, from now on, I'm going to go, who? Mmm. And just be done with it. And so, and this is the will of Him who mm, sent me that I will, that I should lose nothing of all that He has given me, but raise it up on the last day. What's the last day? A lot of people, a lot of people confuse this with the last days. We're in the last days, many of us believe, when the world is about to end. But after that, there is a time where Satan rules the earth. And then after that, Jesus comes back in the New Jerusalem. That is the last day. Because then it starts eternity. Okay? For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son, notice he didn't say Son of Man, looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life. And I will raise Him up on that last day. This is not in disagreement to what He says to the thief on the cross. When the thief on the cross, He says, believe in Me and tonight you will be with Me in heaven. And now it also says later in the book that it's that uh, absent from the body is in the presence of God. It's not what He's talking about. He's like, on the last day, all of you will be with Me. All y'all. You know what that means, right? You know, it's you, y'all, two or three, and all y'all, the whole crowd, right? So, I will raise him up on the last day means that everybody that believes in him will be with him. Now, if you said you and I swore you from Kentucky, then. Heaven forbid I ever use that word again. So, the Jews <laughs> grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. <coughs> Where do you say that? We just we just went over those verses. Do you remember him saying that he was the bread? Yeah. Yes, because the Father gave the bread to those that were in the wilderness, not Moses. And he is the bread that will fill you forever. So that's what they're you know, they're picking things out here. So Jesus is the bread that that came out of heaven is what they're saying and that makes them angry. They don't like the fact that someone is claiming to be part of the deity. They don't, they don't like this. They said, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, that carpenter that's from Nazareth? You know, almost as bad as being from Wartburg or whatever. You know, I'm just making things up here, right? How, well, I will not want to go that far, brother, because that's where I'm from. How does he now say, I have come down from heaven. Okay, don't you remember your own teachings that the Son of God will come down from heaven? From Mount Zion shall it come. Shall he come? Shall, yeah, he come. Who mm, will be the one that saves us, right? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. Don't say such foolish things. There's still so much more that you don't know. No one can come to me unless the Father who mm, sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. This is where a lot of people get tripped up. Jesus, okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him. And that's true. Whomsoever. Whichever way. Who, whomsoever. <laughs> but not all will believe. And not all will be drawn to him. Mm. <clears throat> this is what it means. And I will. No one comes to the Father unless he, the Father, pulls them to me. Okay? That's why I get, I get 
It's one of those things that, that grates on my nerves when I hear someone say, I led so many hundreds of people to the Lord. No, you didn't. You were the vessel that was used by Him who drew them to Himself. It's just one of those things. It's like, I know what you mean, but it bugs me because you say it because that's not in the Word of God. Right. It's not. Right. So, and I will raise Him up on the last day. Again, meaning at the end of time, they'll all be together. It is written in the prophets. <laughs> And they will all be taught by God. Nobody will not, nobody will not, is that good English? That good Rockwoodian, I know that. Ain't nobody that won't understand this. And they will all be taught by God. Everyone who mm, has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So they get it. They understand they get that drawing. They get that, they get that excited feeling. They can't handle it anymore. They want to know who this Jesus is. Why is it that Christians have such a happy demeanor most of the time? And how do they get through the days when it seems like everything is going wrong? Why? Because the Spirit of God lives within us. And it is that Spirit that pulls on their spirits. Praise God. Because everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. I had a question for you, but I have forgotten it, so keep going. Okay. <laughs> uh, just remember at this point that, that I may refer back to it. Okay. In the future. <coughs> Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who mm, is from God, he has seen the Father. So, this is another thing. Who, who has seen God? Jesus. Nobody. That's it. Just Jesus, who is... He who mm, is from God, right? Yeah. Not even Moses. Nobody. Why? What did Moses have to do? Shield his eyes, and he only... Or yes. He looked away, he looked away. He didn't look away. God pushed him into the cleft of the rock. Right. And as he passed by, he moved his hand, and they saw the hem of his garment. And that was all they saw. That was all Moses saw. So, no one has seen the Father except me. And I seen him because I was with him. Remember in the beginning? Yeah, that was us. Me and Dad. Together. Truly, truly. Pay attention to this. I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Now, Understand there is a huge difference between knowing and believing. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Later on, I think it's in uh, Luke, Jesus is walking toward the caveman, right? The, the demoniac, filled with a legion of demons. And they scream, Jesus, do not. They even know yeah. who he is, but they don't believe who he is. That's the difference. Yes, sir. Okay, now, back to where I was talking about. They learned of Jesus through the, the laws of Moses and teachings that they... They, 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 they learned of the prophecies. The prophecies. The prophecies. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, so they learned of him then. And yet they... Well, what was the question I had? How could they not believe? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like... You know, you've been taught this all your life, and he's asking you to believe. Well, I can't. I can't word it. Just go ahead. Go let ahead. me. Let me. Let me try to do it this way. Let me try to do it this way. <laughs> it's right in front of your face, but you can't see it. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's it is. The forest for the trees. Now, now, here comes the interesting question. Did I not just tell you that only those who God pulls to Jesus? will believe. So those that don't believe are not pulled by God are the very ones that God, the Son, is telling, if you don't believe in me, then you won't have eternal life. So the ones that are already drawn to Him are the ones God has sent to Him. Right. But the ones that aren't drawn to Him or that are standing there in front of Him that don't believe, <coughs> it's their choice. It's their choice. It's their choice to believe. They are there, but yet they won't believe. Okay? Oops. I am the bread of life. 
Now, I was going to be real cute there and sing a bread song, but I can't even think of one right now. But anyway, I am the bread of life. Now, if you go back and you look at the elements of what you have to have to survive, food, bread, water, air, all these things, right? This is, this is one of the, the major blocks of what we have to have. Not necessarily bread as in white bread, because we can't have that anymore. But you get the idea. It is the food, the things that our souls need. Okay? Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. Not because they ate the manna, but because it was their time. Oh, oh, I see what they're saying. But how many times have you read that and go, well, they ate the bread and they died? Well, no, they didn't eat the bread and die. They ate the bread and they wandered for 40 years until all of them died, and then the rest of them went into Israel. Because they had fallen back into their old ways, made the heathen gods, said they were, they, they were better off in Egypt. You know, they lost their faith. They ate the manna in the wilderness that God the Father was giving them, and yet they still died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Not the manna, but Christ. And he's not talking about physical life anyway. No, and he's not talking about physical bread either. Right. He's talking about the relationship with him. Believe in me, and you'll be with me forever. That is the bread that should feed you. That should feed your soul. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, not literally, but spiritually, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. What does Jesus say at the Last Supper? When he takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it, he says, take, eat. This is my flesh. This is my flesh. That's what he's talking about. I give my flesh, my physical being, as what is going to be the sacrifice for all sins for all times. And when you eat of the bread, the sacrament, it is a representation, not a literal, but a... a, a, a Transfigural, how whatever you say there, uh, of this story. Yes, sir. In Passover, as part of the last commandment that was given to them, that before the death angel come, they had to take an unblemished lamb and, and sprinkle on the doorpost. Right, but the they blood. Also had to eat everything, mm -hmm. all that lamb after after it was roasted and cooked. Right. Okay. That is also the bread. Yes. For that time. Because yep. when, when they left, when all those Jewish people, the, the slaves, just imagine they're slaves, how bad, what kind of terrible shape they're in and everything. When they left, the Bible says not a one of them. Not a one of them. Was there, not a one of them. Sorry, not a one of them. I mean, because they ate the bread of life. That's the beginning. Of, that's why that we have the Last Supper for the physical, but also for the spiritual. Okay. Everybody good? The Jews then disputed among themselves. They get a load of this guy. How, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Mocking him. Making fun of what he's saying. So Jesus said to them, pay attention. I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you will have no life in you. That is not the sacrament that we take on communion. That communion is representation of this, but it's not the physical. Okay? He's saying if you don't believe in me and accept what I'm giving to you in my body, dying for you, my blood spilling and covering your sins then you will not have eternal life. Okay? Daddy. Daddy, no, 
blood. For who it, not for, Fred's word, sorry. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. There's so many people out there that say, if you don't take communion, you are not saved. That is not what that says. Once again, in context, he's talking about his body that will be given up and his blood that shall be spilt to save your souls. If you don't believe in that, not physically eating, but accepting that into your heart, then you will not be raised up on the last day. Okay? Everybody good with that? For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true green. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. They follow him because of who he is. Not because of what he's done, not because of any rules or, or you know, thou musts or anything like that, but simply abiding in him, staying with him, believing in him, trusting in him, accepting him for who he was. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. And again, that's the eternal life. That's not the physical life here. That's the eternal life with God. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And Jesus said these things in the synagogue as He taught at Capernaum. What is the synagogue? It's the place of worship. That's the place the Jews would worship. Okay? So He's saying this to Jews. All you people that are in this building worshiping our Father God through the law given to you by Moses, I am He that the law has told you about. Feed on Me... In what I tell you and believe and abide with me and be with me in eternity forever. They can't stand him because of this. They absolutely think it is, it is wrong that, he, that anybody would claim to be the Son of God and have this much power and be the one that comes to save them. Right? Right. <coughs> but that, that's it in a, heart, in, a, in a nutshell. That's the whole thing. That whole section there is not about, not about the people that were following Him or the people that believed in Him. He's in the synagogue going, okay, all of you that don't know who I am, here's your list. I am. And He starts with that. I am my Father's Son from heaven. I am the bread that your fathers ate. I am the bread that you need to eat to have eternal life. Again, not physical, but spiritual. As in, I want that. How many, how many times, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've heard this statement. But I, I, I used to not be a Christian, but I saw these people that always had a smile on their face, and I wanted what they had. What did we have? Did we have somebody paying our bills all the time? No. Not literally, you know, but through Him everything can be done, right? Do, do, do they have the best relationships? Do they never get sick? No. It is the fact that they have Christ in their hearts. They have love for brother man. They have an eternity to look forward to. Yes, you would still believe that way. You would think after 2,000 years they'd go. But they can't do it. No, they can't. They're, they are The Jews are now more... But they are tolerant. The people. They are now more tolerant of Christians. Yeah. Remember, because Saul, which becomes Paul, was paid to kill Christians. Yeah. Now, they don't do that anymore. Thank yeah. Everybody okay? Yep. Yeah. We good with this? So, so tonight's lesson is about, about Jesus speaking. Okay, all these people were following him and he disappears. And he shows up in Capernaum with his disciples. But they didn't see him get in the boat. But they come and they follow him, right? They, they I, I want to say they, uh, um, they take over the boats from Tiberias and they run up to Capernaum and say, how'd you get here? Right? He says, don't worry about that. 
Watch this. I am. And he starts rattling this stuff off in the synagogue. So that's where they found him. Right? Okay, so they were all in the synagogue with him. Right. Now, see, you got to put it all in context. Where did it happen? Who was it? What was he talking about? Who was he talking to? So when you put it all together, you're like, oh, this is people that do believe and people that don't believe. He doesn't have to convince the people that do believe, but those that are on the fence, he's saying, here it is. I'm, I'm the one that you've learned about all your life. Take this bread or leave it. That's it. And you can tell which one's left it, right? Be in heaven. And they'll still be hungry. They will still be hungry. Speaking of which. Anyway, so <laughs> questions? Comments? Concerns, CG in the parking lot? <laughs> All right. You know if I have a question, I barred it out anyways. <laughs> I know and I love that and I appreciate it. That, that makes that makes everybody get more involved. Go home and read this again and see if you get any more out of it. Put yourself in that in that spot. Wake up in Capernaum. Uh, wake up in um, on the eastern shore of Tiberias, Lake Tiberias, and go. Where'd you go? I don't know. Where'd you go? In your mind, figure out how you would get to Capernaum. It'll stop in a second. Now, so <laughs> anyway, so put yourself in the story and just know the feelings that were going on that day. You ate well last night. You want more. Is it the food that you want? Or is it the bread that you want? It's not the same thing. All right, then at this point, we'll go ahead and turn off the camera and we'll talk about our personal prayer requests. And we'll see you guys next week.